The uniqueness of this is that my company, Veterans Home Care, helps veterans and surviving spouses get home care through this pension from the Veterans Administration. It has three requirements. Basically, it's for veterans and surviving spouses of the wartime eras, okay. and they are World War II, Korean War, and Vietnam And Vietnam, War. right. The three requirements, of course, the person had to serve at least 90 days with one day during wartime of active duty. They need to have an honorable discharge. Mm -hmm. They also have to have a serious medical condition, which keeps them approximately 60% housebound. I understand. Okay. And not driving. Well, and, and non-medical home care or even medical home care is a much more efficient way to deliver services to people besides that they're home and in familiar surroundings. And Ka Kathleen, is this a big population? I mean, you're not going to shock me if you tell me it's tens of thousands of people. Oh, it's thousands of people. Forty-five percent of our seniors here are veterans. Wow. Well, now, that's not surprising. Everybody was involved, especially World War II, and those exactly. are, but that's really got to be the, the bubble of the population. So how does a person access these programs? Do they, they call to buy your company, or is there a 800 number? It's 877-878-4248. Uh -huh. Okay, and we'll have that on the screen. Get your pencil and paper out. That's, uh, say it again, please. 877-878-4248. Mm -hmm. Okay, and is there a website as well? Yes. And Our that is? Our website is www. I left the W out. <laughs> That's okay. We know Veteranshomecare.com. Veteranshomecare.com. All right. Now, once you became energized on this subject, were you surprised when you saw how many people needed this service? I knew it in my heart. When mm -hmm. my mom was ill, I called my husband. I said, we're starting a new business <laughs> because right. there have to be thousands of people that are going through exactly what I went through mm -hmm. in taking care of my parent. And the pension is difficult to get because you have to spend more than your income on medical expenses in order to receive this. I understand, but that's not so hard to do with the costs of prescriptions and all the rest. Some of us well, are really only, being hammered. The only qualifying expense that mm -hmm. you can use is home care. I see. And most people can't afford to pay for home care and the rent. So that's what's unique about Veterans Home Care. Mm -hmm. We front the money for the veteran and surviving spouse. And when they get the money from the pension, they reimburse us for the services that we've given them. I see. Well, that's wonderful because so often the upfront costs of uh, getting into a program are so intimidating, people say, oh, I just, I, I don't have the resources to do this. And they throw their hands up. Yeah. Now, Kathleen, talk to me about planning ahead. What if you're like the son or daughter of a veteran who may be in this position? Can you kind of plan ahead to, to get these services in place before the need arises? Yes, that's a great idea to do that. Mm -hmm. so, you know, there's a lot of paperwork to compile together. I'm sure. Um, that, you know, they need to do that. Mm -hmm. So preparing for that is the best way because we, you know, I pre-qualify them. And then what? Okay. I didn't miss that. The papers that they need are going to be the discharge paper, which right. should be honorable, the marriage license, the death certificate, the death certificate of the spouse, right. and they need bank statements and a social security yeah. award. They, you got to right. prove all of this right. stuff. Exactly. Well, I, I hope this has been a value to you veterans out there who may be in this very unique position. Well, not so unique. Uh, probably a lot of people out there are, are in this position. Help is available. We'll be putting back the telephone number and the website for you. Um, so please access this program. Uh, there's help available. We'll be right back.
We're here to scientifically prove the end result of riding a bicycle against traffic. The average car weighs 6,000 pounds. The average bicycle with rider weighs 170 pounds, give or take a few. A typical car traveling 35 miles per hour has 220 times the momentum or energy of a bike rider traveling 10 miles per hour. And if the two collide, bug splatter. Avoid being bug splatter. Right, right. Stop at the light. Watch the road. Yo, check this out. I'm at the light, right? Dude was trying to fill me out. So I blew right past him. <laughs> yeah, I won. <laughs> but I wasn't the real winner because he's alive. And I'm dead. What about my family? I wasn't even part of your street race. Now I'm dead. And don't even think, man, that'll never happen to me, dog, because that's what I thought. And now, I didn't even get a chance to say goodbye. Listen. Life is important. Drive responsibly. Learn more at watchtheroad.org. Welcome back to Aging Well in L.A. Now, anybody in this city knows that we have a great park system. And I want to introduce you to Anthony Montanez, who is with our city park system. And, and welcome. Thank you for welcome. being here. Thank you for having me. Our parks play an amazing key role in the lives of seniors because they can access those facilities. What were some of the special things you learned today about the role that the, uh, the parks uh, uh, play in lives of seniors? Well, what I learned through the uh, speaker that, that spoke earlier was mm -hmm. how we can attract the baby boomers. There's a lot of people out there that don't realize that they are seniors. Yes, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, and making our senior centers more attracted attractive mm -hmm. to them. Sure. Now, what was the discussion? It was like games or or outings? Or? Uh, more outings, mm -hmm. camping, uh, skiing, going out, jogging, mountain biking, just fun things to do. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. Not just sitting there and playing bingo b bingo and, and other you know table games are great. Yeah. Sure. Some people want to get out and enjoy the outdoors. Well, I think so. And, and uh, the boomers are a lot more active. Uh, they That's like right. golf outings and going up the mountains, uh, which are nearby. That's for sure. So is this something that you will pass on to activities directors at the various facilities? Yes, uh, a lot of our directors ha are in the, uh, the, the knowledge fair they're mm -hmm. attending. Yes. And hopefully they'll take that back and we'll discuss it and how we can get some additional funding to do a lot of this. Right, well, additional funding, that's going to be a challenge in these mm -hmm. times, that's for sure. But have the, have the parks, um, uh, have they been able to maintain at least a level of service that, that is sufficient? I think we have. Mm -hmm. we, we haven't really had any major cutbacks. Uh, we have had some cutbacks, but mm -hmm. I think we're going to be okay. I mean, we've got a good group of people out there working hard. We have a great volunteer corps, which right. really steps up during these times. Well, I think it's great that when people, once they can get themselves there the first time, they sort of fall into the lifestyle, yes. don't they? Oh, yes. They and, do. and then they bring their best ideas, mm -hmm. which I like to see. Oh, yeah. Now, are the nutrition programs uh, delivered at Parks, are they still going on? Uh, yes, they are. We have several different uh, nutrition programs that come to our parks. Right. I, I know I've always been encouraged to see how often our seniors are really getting a good meal and some guidance for nutrition at home. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's a great thing about yeah. this. They, uh, you know, the meals, I, I know they're not uh, they're filled with a lot of spices and salts and stuff, right. but they're, they're healthy <laughs> meals. and. You know, they, they also get the, uh, the information they need to take this, take it home and, and make better meals at, at home. Right, I think so. And, and the best part, though, is the socialization. Seniors getting together with their common interests, mm. even if it's pulling out your wallet and saying, well, I've got uh -huh. a new grandkid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, show their pictures. Are the leagues still going on, the bowling leagues and the pool to, uh, leagues and things we, like that? We, we do have aqua aerobics, uh -huh. uh, Great. water fitness programs at some of our facilities. We have a lawn bowling at, at uh, Arcadia Park. Great. And that seems to attract a lot of people, and it's a great sport. Oh, that's good. Seniors got to get out more often. Anthony oh, yeah. Montanez, thank you so much thank for you. joining us. Thank you and, for having um, me. We'll be right back. Welcome to Bro Institute, a nonprofit organization that has been designed to work with individuals with fading vision. Please come along with us as we explore our Vista store a store that has many different items and accessories that can support individuals with fading vision. I'm here with our Vista store coordinator, Jorge Marquez, who will explain some of the wonderful items that we have here available for people with low vision. Hi. 
Here are a few devices that we have in, in our store. We have a, a 10x magnifier mirror. Uh, we also have a low vision keyboard with large print as well. We have a, an atomic talking watch and also with large numbers so that the person can either look at the numbers or can hear the, the voice. We have a large print button TV remote control that will make it also easier for the person with fading vision. There is a large print big address book. We also have a giant print address book, which is much larger than the one before, with numbers and names that can be very bold in lines. And we also have as well a pocket address book with large words and numbers. We have a uh, a pen that is called 2020. This pen will write in bold and it doesn't leak. And it doesn't go through the page. As you can see, one, and you can see the numbers really bold. Okay. As you can see, these devices are very useful for individuals with fading vision. Come and see us at any time. We're here for you and enjoy. Thank you. As you can see, we have so many opportunities here for people with fading vision. You may know somebody who has fading vision, or you yourself may have vision that's not doing so well. Remember, we are here. Come and see us. We are here to help you. Almost all of our students have some vision. Only 10% of people have no vision at all. You could be one of those, somebody with macular degeneration, glaucoma, diabetic retinopathy, or even cataracts. All of those are the people that are here. People with those diseases are the people that are here at Braille Institute. So please, come join us. Your life can be very good again. Welcome back to Aging Well in L.A. We are still here at the Senior Center's Director's Gathering at the, uh, the Braille Institute with a, a longtime friend of our show, Larry Lismanby. It's great to see you again, Larry. Thank you. It's great to be here. Are you enjoying the conference? Absolutely. Incredible this morning. Yeah, this, I heard there was a standing ovation. It was. He was. He had clearly done his homework. Mm -hmm. He gave us some really good practical suggestions about what we can do going forward to make our senior centers a success and to meet the needs of the boomers and the seniors. Well, it's especially challenging in this year with with the downsizing and the budget cuts. Uh, how are you doing over there at One Generation? Is, is it the, are the challenges insurmountable? No, they're surmountable. We think we're going to survive, but we do, we've lost staff due to layoffs, and those layoffs are a result of cutbacks in government funding and reductions in grants that are available out there. Yeah, well, and the economy is flat. I don't know what else to call it. And isn't it remarkable this happens at exactly the time when the needs are increasing because there are more and more seniors? It's as if there were an inverse relationship, just as our funding goes down the need for services has gone fact, up. It's remarkable. I know I spoke with the seniors group and we were talking about the greater need for volunteers who can help fill in the gap with their wisdom and their energy. Yes, and because of cutbacks and staffing, the need for volunteers is going to increase this coming year. I think so. Most seniors would not be able to function, in my opinion, without additional volunteers. Uh, it's true. This is a place where we really have to plug the holes. We, we need to step up, and uh, whether it's m meal delivery or food service or transportation uh, or just someone to help run the dance class, for goodness sake. Yes. We, we're increasingly relying upon volunteers to conduct our programs, activities, exercises. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, a volunteer gets so much more back. I know I see that across the board. The, the volunteers are just... Uh, they beam with pleasure knowing they're doing some good for their community. And, and the good news of all this is as the baby boomers come online, more of them are interested in serving as opposed to being served. Right. So they're looking for meaningful outlets, and they have a lot to contribute. Well, when you come away from this gathering, will you have some new ideas and some fresh approaches, you Ab think? Absolutely. I'm, I'm excited about getting back to my staff and saying, look, these are some of the things we learned about as way we can attract seniors to our center, right. make it more attractive, make their experience here more meaningful, mm -hmm. more relevant. So that should be a, a good outcome. Well, that's a good reason to have these conferences, <laughs> like-minded people sharing their best ideas. Yeah, yes, it is. We do this every six months, and we 
always go away with things that we can do to make our centers more effective, more attractive, and to benefit the seniors. Great. Well, Larry, thank you again for being with us today. It's a great pleasure. And uh, thanks so much for being with us today on Aging Well in L.A. I'm Eric Garcetti, and I'm proud to represent Hollywood on the Los Angeles City Council. There are so many interesting things to see here, some famous, some less famous, but just as interesting. Today, we'll show you one of each. But let's go on location at one of Hollywood's landmarks. The Hollywood Museum boasts more than 10,000 exhibits of props, costumes, sets, and other memorabilia from film and television favorites. Rocky's boxing gloves, Indiana Jones's whip and Superman's cape have all retired at the Hollywood Museum. Hannibal Lecter's jail cell from Silence of the Lambs is here also along with the gold Cadillac featured in Dreamgirls and thousands of other items made famous in Hollywood. The museum is housed in the former Max Factor building where the makeup expert worked his magic on movie stars. This is where Marilyn Monroe became a blonde and Lucille Ball got that red hue. The museum is open Wednesday through Sunday, and you can get more information by going to www.thehollywoodmuseum.com. After you've seen the Hollywood Museum, walk across the street and check out another Hollywood locale. The Portrait of Hollywood Mural at Hollywood High School was completed in 2002 and features notable performers, including Hollywood High alumni Judy Garland, Carol Burnett, Brandy, Ricky Nelson, Lawrence Fishburne, and Lana Turner. In 2008, actor John Ritter, who was the student body president when he attended the school, was added to the side of the building. In addition to being an accomplished muralist, artist Eloy Torres teaches at-risk youth at the nearby Hollywood Boys and Girls Club. It's all right here in Hollywood, so bring your family and check it out today. Bulky item pickup? Call 311, the toll free number for non emergency services. 311, your one call to City Hall. Graffiti removal? Call 311, the toll free number for non emergency services. 311, your one call to City Hall. Hi, this is Anna Tarian. I design eco friendly clothing in Sherman Oaks. To watch eco-friendly programming, watch Channel 35, our city, our channel.
live in a moment. In council chambers, we are now going live from Los Angeles City Hall, Los Angeles City Council meeting. Mr. Alacon, Mr. Cardenas, Ms. Hahn, thank you. Mr. Koretz, Mr. Labonge, thank you for being here on time. Ms. Perry, Mr. Reyes, uh, Council Member Zine, we are waiting the, waiting the arrival of two additional council members to begin our meeting for today, Wednesday, uh, June 8th. We are at eight members. We need two more to begin. So we're looking for Mr. Wezar, Mr. Kokorian, Mr. Parks, Mr. Rosenthal, Mr. Smith, and Mr. Wesson, please come to Chambers so we can get our meeting for Wednesday, June 8th. Mr. Cardenas. Yes, sir. Um, who's, who's excused at this time? Excused is Ms. Hahn, who's here, uh, Mr. Garcetti, and uh, you're excused at 12, excuse and I'm excused at 12.15, so everyone's supposed to be here. Thank you. Ms. Hahn is here, and you're not even supposed to be here, and thank you for being here, Ms. Hahn. So the other members, Mr. Smith has arrived. Thank you, Mr. Smith. We are at nine members. We need one more to begin our meeting for today, June 8th. Mr. Wezar, Mr. Corian, Mr. Parks, Mr. Rosenau, Mr. Wesson, please come to chambers. Waiting your arrival to begin our meeting. Members, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Alarcon, Cardinal Hahn, Wezar, Koretz, Gregorian, LaBunch, Parks, Perry, Reyes, Rosendahl, Smith, Wesson, Zion, Garcetti, 10 members present, and a quorum. Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is now the uh, beginning of the LA City Council meeting for today, Wednesday, June 8th. We are live on Channel 35. You can view us on the internet, lacity.org. And uh, we are now going to turn the proceedings over to the Honorable Assistant Pro Tem, Council Member, President Pro Tem, President Pro Tem. Council Member Jan Perry. Thank you, Mr. Zein. All right, Mr. Clerk, what is the first order of business? Uh, Madam President, uh, our first order of business would be approval of the minutes. All right, Mr. Reyes moves, Mr. Smith seconds. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Uh, Ms. Hahn moves, Mr. Alarcon seconds. Madam President, would you like to run through the agenda? Yes. Item one is an ordinance notice for public hearing. Uh, there is a speaker's card on this matter. Would you like to hold it on the desk? Yes, I would. Item two is a street vacation hearing protest uh, notice for public hearing. Uh, there are no speaker's cards uh, received at this time for this all matter. All right, why don't we open the no, nobody wants, no one's in the queue on that item. So we'll open the roll. Close the roll, tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Next item. Items three through 11 are items for which public hearings have been held. Committee reports for items four and five have been submitted and distributed to council for consideration. In regards to uh, item three, uh, it should be received and filed in as much as the modification failed by a vote of 49.69% uh, of the ballots received in favor of the proposed modification and 50.31% uh, percent of the ballot votes uh, against that. Um, council is not authorized to consider the ordinance at this time, so uh, this matter should be received and filed. All right. Uh, members, are there any other specials? Any other specials? All right. Open the roll on all of those items. Close the roll. Then tabulate the vote. Eleven ayes. Uh, next order of business. Mm -hmm. 
Madam President, items 12 through 20 are items for which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration. All right. Members, specials? Any specials? 12 through 20. Mr. Reyes. Ma excuse me, Madam President. There are requests from members to continue item 12 to June 29th. Okay. That will be without objection. And item 13 to June 15th. Okay. Again, without objection. Mr. Reyes. Thank you. It's been the continued. Appreciate that. Okay, good. All right, anybody else? Any other? All right, then open the roll on the remaining items, please. M Madam President, excuse me. We Mr. do have cards on, on items 15, 16, 18, and 19. Mr. Smith? Did you? Okay. All right. Take the vote and I'll come back. All right, great. Okay, why don't you have, okay, oh, okay, okay. All right, so let's open the roll on the remaining items. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Next order of business. Madam President, at the request of Mr. Wesson, I ask that item six be reconsidered and put back on the agenda. Mo motion to reconsider. Number six. Number six. All right, Mr. Uh, Smith has made a request to reconsider item number six. So before we proceed, why don't we open the roll on that motion, that request to reconsider number six. Uh, open that. Close it. Eleven ayes. Okay. Item number six is uh, now reconsidered. Now I'd ask you to hold it for Mr. Wesson's arrival. Okay. So we'll hold six on the desk. Next item or next order of business. Madam President, items 21 and 22 are items scheduled for closed session. All right. Nope. Would Stop. you like to hold it on the desk until uh, yeah, Councilmember Parks arrives? Yes. Any other items? Uh, now would be the time. Uh, it's too early to go. Uh, oh. Excuse me. It's not too early uh, to uh, go into the special if you'd like to. Uh, I, I might. Warn that. Uh, very good. Uh, Madam President, uh, that takes council back to items called special or public comment. Why don't we go to public comment first and let a, some more time elapse before we go into uh, the special agenda? This is a uh, public comment period, and I'm going to call Daniel Gus. Arnold Sachs, Dr. Williams, and John Walsh. Uh, Mr. Gus? Good morning. Is Mr. Rosendahl here yet? Because this is, involves his council district. His, Mr. Rosendahl ha, ha, is not in, okay. in, in well, chambers. Okay. Uh, city checking. Council, if you're not aware of it, uh, next month there is going to be a pit bull breeding event in Venice. I have to wonder, with all the posturing that City Hall does and Animal Services does about um, uh, breeding problems in Los Angeles and pit bulls overflowing in our streets and the shelters. How in the world did the city issue a permit for a pit bull breeding show on Venice, no less? As if the LAPD doesn't have enough trouble in Venice, we're now going to have a pit bull breeding show where they not only set up sales of animals, but they also arrange to have the animals breeding in Venice. And you guys think that there's not enough trouble in Venice yet? Um, at a recent commission meeting, your breeder, general manager, Brenda Barnett, said she didn't know if, if breeding and animal sales are done at these events. Well, guess what? They are. How come Ms. Barnett doesn't know that there are breeding and sales of pit bull puppies on Venice Beach? I mentioned this to her, and she keeps evading the question. You think you have problems with people at Venice Beach? Just wait till you see the crowd that this event brings in next month. Now that we can get on to other business, if you haul in Miss Barnett about this pit bull breeding event in Venice, ask her, did the city of Los Angeles remove a private party's microchip from a dog? Because I have the internal email from Miss Barnett with her staff. And uh, to quote one member of the staff, he said, we need to cover our butts about this. And Brenda said, let's keep this between ourselves. I have Brenda Barnett's email. So the city's removing microchips from private parties' dogs 
and is being evasive, or let's just say not telling the whole truth in the report she's writing for Mr. Parks. And we're having pit bull breeding events in Venice. That's wonderful. At the very least, please stop posturing about our humane problems in LA if you're gonna allow this. You need to pull that permit. And this is not the only time this has happened this year. They had one at Staples Center too. If she doesn't know about the sales, come on. Thank you. Arnold Sachs. Following Arnold Sachs will be Dr. Clyde Williams. After Dr. Williams will be John Walsh. And after John Walsh will be Vera Pinkston. Mr. Thank Sachs. You. Good morning, Arnold Sachs. With all the recommendations in the council the last couple of meetings that you've had regarding state legislation, I have yet to hear the council's recommendation for the ballot measure the governor wants to enact that would allow the voters to uh, decide on the extension of the ta taxes that are due to, dis to expire on July 1st. I've yet to hear any other council members speak up on, on that. There's been some discussion, red light cameras, and the question about why the judges won't enforce them, it's very simple. You don't sign the ticket, so you're not making a promise to appear in court. So the judges don't have a way to enforce that part of the violation. Very simple, A, B, C. Back to the gold card fiasco for a few moments. There was an article on June 3rd in the LA Times. The article stated, the gold card program has been in effect for 15 years which is different from the first article that said the gold card program has been in effect for 30 years. Pretty soon the gold card co program never existed and everybody's home free. Speaking of the gold card, that would have been a great idea for the group home restrictions. Give the people a gold card number they can call if they have problems where people are illegally ch changing ho home structures to put in more people than are allowed. And then finally, there was an article last week regarding conflict of interest with the city attorneys, that the city attorney is giving advice to the city council on items that deal with their contract. And yet there's an employee relations, executive employee relations committee that has council members sit on it that make decisions on contracts that come before the council that is voted on. So how can one be a conflict of interest and the other one not be a conflict of interest? Well, it all depends on which end of the horse you're listening to. Thank you for your time, answers, and attention. Dr. Williams, following Dr. Williams will be John Walsh. Following John Walsh will be Vera Pinkston. Good morning. Dr. Clyde Williams, El Sereno, Northeast LA. There is a bill that's in, that passed the assembly and hopefully is on its way to the Senate. Mr. Assemblyman Gil Cedillo proposed and got passed through the assembly, a revision of the California Transportation Code, which basically gives back the veto power of any city over Caltrans projects. The question is, can we help? Can the city of Los Angeles support the South Pasadena and Pasadena and Gil's deals move to return local control to transportation facilities within our community? You've already passed a resolution through this city council as to eliminating zones one and two from Caltrans's uh, SR710 North Extension Project, and to remove the portal from my section, El Sereno. This would be great, except for one thing. The city of Los Angeles already has signed off on the 710. Can the city council of Los Angeles rescind, revoke the previous agreement with Caltrans regarding the 710, which that agreement's only about 25, 30 years old. So maybe conditions have changed. Please rescind Sam Yorty's approval of Caltrans's SR 710 North Extension and support AB 353 by Mr. Gil Cedillo. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Williams. John Walsh and then Vera Pinkston. John Walsh, blogging at Hollywood Highlands, H-I-G-H-L-A-N-D-S dot org. Over 100,000 successful server requests 
per month, thanks to the people who are watching out here through the camera. Uh, and also Mickey Jackson, M-I-K-J-A-C-K-S-O-N. That's at Facebook, us become our friend. I'd like to point out what the press is not covering, which is this, there is being built at this very moment a 24-hour nightclub called Reflection inside the LAPD headquarters. Now, this is insanity. I must have lost my mind. 24 hours, full uh, alcohol, DJs, music, recorded music, and live players. If you don't believe me, go to the southeast corner of, Holly, uh, of the police headquarters and see it under construction, and it doesn't even have a zone variance yet. This is what happens when the mayor pulls strings. When this story finally appears in the media that we are the only police headquarters in the United States with a nightclub inside, in fact, I'm told there may be a nightclub in the Bangkok police headquarters. But other than that, nowhere else on planet Earth, and you know nothing about it, and only a member of the public knows about it. I went to the police commission and said that they should change their motto from preserve, uh, from protect and to, and to serve, to protect and to serve alcohol. Hollywoodhighlands.org to find out what's really going on in this city for shame. Thank you very much. Vera Pinkston. Good morning. Uh, my name is Vera Pinkston. I'm a uh, homeless in LA County because uh, I had purchased a membership in the Black World Trade Organization uh, based out of Los Angeles here. And my unfortunate um, Life has began because uh, I first need to make a statement to the uh, city attorney that uh, these people have placed a lot of uh, lawsuits in my name uh, against a lot of uh, public uh, entities, uh, medical, uh, social security. Uh, they've been uh, constantly trying to do uh, a lot of bogus business in my name, and they also filed, they placed a lot of uh, apartments and housing in my name, and even went down to the rescue mission and taking part in the federal programs there in my name. I've been here four years, but I also like to state that uh, these people have a, a tendency to call the police department whenever I'm making complaints for the assaults that they take, that take place against me. And I was wondering if, uh, it could be possible that someone could address that because someone could just call ahead and say that this is my aunt, this is my cousin, she's just making a false complaint. And that also that um, these are uh, people who recently were in Glendale uh, doing the same thing to me. And I just also uh, want to bring to your attention that uh, being homeless in Los Angeles and having these things been victimized and stalked and into all the uh, federal and uh, different agencies trying to just protect my well-being is something that I like uh, for the city attorney to keep in mind because there are a lot of women here who are also going through the same thing. We come here, uh, we're victims, but we just need some uh, a special, uh, well, some additional access just to get to the police without someone calling ahead to say that we're not a victim. Thank you very much. All right, I believe that marks the end of our public, okay, that marks the end of our public comment period. Uh, Mr. Clerk, what is the first item? This, that brings us back to item one, called special for cards. Okay. Item would be one? We're going with one first, yes? Yes, ma'am. All right, then uh, Arnold Sachs, on item number one. Is Arnold Sachs present? Oh, there he is, okay. Thank you. Looks like council chambers is almost empty. There's only, what, five people, six people sitting at their desk. Would you ask if they're present? 
Um, it was really interesting last Friday when you had to uh, vote on a business uh, improvement district, property improvement district last Friday to find out that the bids, business, whether it's business or property improvement, come in after the CRA has done developing the property. And additionally here, um, this is a nonprofit, but the Chatsworth Business Improvement Corporation, who operates the nonprofit. That's not in this item on the agenda. But the bids coming in and taking over for the CRA means there's no, no in initiative and no need to develop low-cost housing, which is the prime directive of the CRA, because the CRAs no longer operate the area, so we don't need low-cost housing. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Members, uh, there's nobody in the queue, so why don't we open the roll on item one? Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Mr. Parks? I'd like to get four and five reconsidered, uh, not for the financial impact, but for the briefing of the Kern County and the Arden case for the council. All right, there's a motion to uh, reconsider items four and five. Please open the roll on that. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. All right. Motion uh, four and five are now reconsidered. Um, did you want to take them up now, Mr. Parks, or do you want to hold them on the desk? We have a closed session with 21 Okay, and great. All right, thank you. All right, what's, that? what's our next item, Mr. Clerk? Madam President, that brings us to item 15 called Special for Cards. All right. Arnold Sachs and John Walsh. John Walsh, are you still here? John Walsh? John Walsh, whoever gets here first can speak first. Come on up. John Walsh is closer. All right, and then Arnold Sachs can speak after John Walsh. This, this John Walsh blogging at Hollywood Highlands, H I G H L A N D S dot org. Our new post is out for the last few days. Go to it, find out what's happening. Expo line. You know, the Expo line is the Rosemary's baby of mass transportation. It's hundreds of millions of dollars over budget. It's years behind schedule. In fact, it was, it was a racist line in that uh, the Dorsey, they had no interest in the safety of the, de the, children, uh, the, the, the students at Dorsey. Damian Goodman and Fix Expo had to go to Sacramento to get, you should not give them a dime. They had to go to the PUC to get a station at Dorsey and to get simple safety precautions that are in effect whenever a line goes through a white neighborhood. When it goes through a black neighborhood, not a single black politician stood up, and it took a group headed by Damian Goodman. And when this thing opens, I'd like to say, in finality, hundreds of millions of dollars, don't give them another dime. You will be able to go from Culver City to downtown to enjoy the Reflections nightclub, the only nightclub in the world inside a police headquarters. John, I'm sorry, thank you, uh, Arnold Sachs. Mr. Mr. Wesson, yes. Yeah, if, if I could just speak, uh, if Mr. Sachs, if you could give me a minute. Just so to set the record straight, where it relates to the Dorsey Station, that idea came from Ms. Perry's chief of staff, who passed the suggestion on to my chief of staff with the support of Ms. Perry and Mr. Parks. On a motion submitted by me, we, the construction authority of the Expo Line, were able to get the station at Dor Dorsey High School with through an agreement that we had with LAUSD. I do want to give the community their uh, respect because they're the ones that elevated my discomfort level and the discomfort level of my colleagues 
where related to safety concerns at Dorsey. But I'm proud of what we did, and I believe that what we did was a collaboration. Even though in the beginning, the community would prefer to go over, uh, above grade or below grade, we had to market the idea of the station and at the end of the day we were successful so I just wanted to set the uh, record straight on that and to make sure that the the idea came from Kathy in Miss Perry's office thank you mr. Weston and also for the record there are 13 members present here today Arnold Sachs yes, thank you how interesting Local Measure R return funds are going to be used for the Expo Light Rail, three different stations, account number G351, G352, and G216. Total, no, total amount, uh, $1.3 million, a little over $1.3 million. So how much money, A, has been allocated to those three specific funds from Measure R, and B, how much money is left in those three accounts from Measure R, and C, funding was needed for the flower station in downtown LA on the fiasco with that is the downtown connector. Is there funding for that? And D, will there be funding for the line for uh, Supervisor Ridley Thomas who wants the Crenshaw line underground portion of the way plus a station at Limert Park? So who's got funding for that? Because that's Measure R funding also. And will these accounts exist there? Or will they be different for Measure R for the Crenshaw line? And E, a Los West Los Angeles Transportation Improvement and Mitigation Program, TIMP? Is there a South Los Angeles Mitigation Transportation Program, an East Los Angeles, and a North Los Angeles? What is going on with these accounts? Do we have some kind of I know, transparency. Here's news. City Council passed gas, and you know what? It was transparent. Thank you for your time, answers, and attention. Thank you very much. Uh, open the roll on this item. There are no speakers in the queue. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Next item. I have a special introduction. Sure. Before we go on to the next item. Mr. Labange. Thank you very much, Madam President. We have very special guests here today. They're the parents of our very special assistant city attorney, Ann Haley. Please welcome Ambassador George Haley and Doris Haley from Washington, D.C. Please rise to be recognized by the Los Angeles City Council. Thank you. Mr. Clerk, what is our next item? Madam President, that brings us to item 16, called special for cards. All right. Item 16. Uh, Dr. Williams. Dr. Clyde Williams, El Sereno, also a member of LA 32 Neighborhood Council. Just interested in surplus equipment and how people learn about where it is and how much it's worth. Because LA 32 Neighborhood Council dedicated over $1,000 to purchase of handheld radios for our CERT people. Now we find that, hey, maybe for a dollar each, you could buy them surplus if we knew about them and where they were and who was in charge of them. So I'd highly recommend that within the city of Los Angeles, there should be a list of surplus equipment available to the neighborhood councils before it goes surplus to nonprofits outside the city of Los Angeles. So it would be nice to find out about such things before others get to them, because supposedly neighborhood councils are part of the city of Los Angeles. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Williams, or Dr. Williams. Uh, no speakers in the queue on this item. Please open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Next item. Item 18, called Special for Cards. All right. Um, Dr. Williams again. Item 18, Dr. Williams. Dr. Clyde Williams. Uh, 
LA 32 Neighborhood Council. I was here Saturday. It was kind of an entertaining farce because here's one of the real things that happened yesterday. On June the 21st, the Board of Water and Power will take a vote on the budget. However, the budget for water alone will be $200 million below the revenue. Oh, how is it that a department within the city of Los Angeles can tell us one thing on Saturday and then tell us a different thing on Tuesday and the fact that they're going to request, let's see, total revenue with no rate increase. Well, the total revenue is less than the total budget. Is it common practice for departments in the city of Los Angeles to project a budget that exceeds their revenue without coming up with a plan? And they say, oh, well, we can't calculate what the rates will be. On Saturday, they said, oh, well, we can't calculate what the rates will be. Uh, the $200 million would roughly come out to about $20 per month for a family. So that tells me it's going to be a rate increase across the board. So we'd like to uh, have the next one paid for. Yeah, it's going to be, the Saturday session was going to be paid for by LADWP, but it seems like a waste of money for one of the departments when they're going to have a $200 million shortfall on 21st of June, which is before all of the public meetings regarding the budget are completed. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Williams. There are no speakers in the queue. Uh, Mr. Clerk, please open the roll. Close the roll and then tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Next item. That would bring us to item 19, call special for cards. All right, item 19. Arnold Sachs. Okay, Mr. Sachs, you've got two minutes for the rest of the day. Then I have two more minutes in a special meeting. Thank you. It's very interesting. On uh, May 24th, the County Board of Supervisors on their agenda also considered an action plan for the 37th year of CDBG funds. And what was interesting in their agenda, if not in this agenda, is they wanted to administer 13 point, no, almost $14 million in unexpended CDBG funds from prior years. They had an action plan and they have almost $14 million in unexpended CDBG funds. So my question is, County Board of Supervisors, because you have a 37th year plan, and since, you know, that old saying, the nuts don't fall far from the tree, what kind of action plans do you have that allow for almost $14 million in unexpended funds? So maybe we need leadership from the county board, from the city council, oh wait, that was tried. Thank God that failed to sit on the County Board of Supervisors. Um, in addition to that, just out of curiosity, I'm reading through this sign. It's item, item seven on this agenda item says, increase line 131, number 131, Old, J Old City Jail Feasibility Study by $50,000, and decrease line number 124, CDD, which is what? Doesn't say including related costs by $50,000. So we know what line 131 is, but we don't know what line 124 is. It's little nitpicking like that that what it makes you wonder just exactly what is going on with, it, with the funding that the city and the county get and how it's being expensed and how it's being manipulated. Thank you. All right, no speakers in the queue on that item. Would you please open the roll? Open the roll. If somebody, if one of the, if one of the council, you want to receive and file this, yes. Mr. Wesson? Yes. Okay, so we're going to open the roll to receive and file this matter. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. All right, next item. 
Next item. That brings us back to item number six. Tammy Membrano. Is Tammy Membrano here? Come on up, Tammy. We are on item number six now. Good morning, my name is Tammy Membreño. I am the Executive Director for Barrio Action Youth and Family Center, and we're one of the Family Source Centers, and I am here this morning to thank Council Member Wieser's office and Council Member Reyes's office for all the support and all the help that they have given us through this process. It has been a, um, a long process, and we, we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel now, so on behalf of our FSC and other FSCs, um, I want to thank the council for moving the process along and making sure that we stay put with the funding for the family source centers. So it is essential and important for us to continue the work and to continue the work in the way that we have done it in the past. So, uh, Council Member Wieser, thank you. Council Member Reyes, thank you so much. Um, and that's, uh, we wanted to make sure that um, in the future the um, Nonprofits also have a, a big role in explaining how much these services are needed. So thank you. Thank you very much. All right, no speakers in the queue on this item, so please open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. All right, Mr. Clerk, what is our next item? Madam Clerk, we have uh, the items uh, that are uh, agendized for closed session or the special meeting? Let's go into the special meeting then and adjourn the regular meeting. I'm sorry. Very no. good. Alarcon, yeah. Cardenas, Hahn, Wiesar, Koretz, Krikorian, LaBange, Parks, Perry, Reyes, Rosendahl, Smith, West, and Zion Garcetti. 13 members present and a quorum. Madam President. All right. What's the first item on the special agenda? That brings us to uh, the only item, item 23. It's an item uh, for which public hearing has not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration. We have a number of cards on item 23. So I'm going to call people up five at a time. If they would line up at the uh, lectern. Uh, Chang Lee. Is Mr. Chang Lee here? Chang Lee. Okay, great. Arnold Sachs. Socorro. Moreno, is Socorro here? Okay, great. And John Walsh and Wu Wan Choi. Wu Wan Choi. All right, Mr. Lee. Good morning, Council President Pro Tem and Council Members. My name is Chang Lee, Chairman of the Korean Town Arts and Recreation Center Coalition, also known as KR. KR consists of 12 community organizations, and they are Korean American Federation. Korean American Chamber of Commerce, Korean American Coalition, Koreatown Immigrant Workers Alliance, Koreatown Youth and Cultural Center, Pacific American Volunteer Association, Korean Churches for Community Development, Korean Resource Center, Korean American Family Service Center, Korean Festival Foundation, Korean Community Lawyers Association, and Wuchu Center Koreatown Neighbor Council. The Koreatown communities are here to fully support item number 23, allowing CRA to purchase the 3670 Wuchu Boulevard lot. This acquisition is a dream come true for our community. We are united in working toward the community center and the park. We appreciate Councilmember Herb Wesson and City 10 staff for their hard work in making this happen. The project will be a, a catalyst for sustainable development for our community. Happiness and smiles you bring to our community is priceless. I urge you to vote yes on this project. Thank you. Arnold Sachs. Following Arnold Sachs will be Socorro Moreno. Yes, thank you. Good morning again, Arnold Sachs. That's quite a lot of property. 96,750 square feet of land. I wonder if it's large enough, enough property to build a football stadium there. Just asking. But uh, in addition, a $21 million cost, $17 million in bonds. You wonder why AEG can't float a, a loan like that to build its stadium. Um, Questions, how much, low in, how much low income housing is going to be developed on this site? Question, uh, there was recently a building proposed in downtown LA for, for Little Tokyo 
that's going to include a park, but the park is going to be on top of the building. So the only access to the neighborhood is if you belong to, as a, if you have access to the building itself. So the gentleman who just spoke before me mentioned the park being developed. Will that also be the state, the case here, where the park is accessible, but only if you have access to the building? A um, lot to be asked regarding this. Oh, my goodness gracious. This is a... <laughs> and again, CRA involved. What happens when the CRA development area is discontinued and it's taken over by a bid? Again, what are the requirements as far as housing? There's been a lot of discussion, again, with Jerry Brown's item on the budget regarding cancellation or, or dissolvement of the CRA agencies. How will that affect this program if it goes through? Although that may be just a threat because nobody seems to be following through on that. Or is this one of the projects that has been in the pipeline with all the money that the mayor was claiming wasn't available or nobody knew about, you know, the $930 million that came to light after Jerry Brown requested uh, dissolving the CRA. A lot of different questions. We know, though, that city council is on top of everything because they're open and transparent and they got a gold card. Thank you. Right. No. All right. Now, some, uh, Mr. Ms. Moreno, let, let me go read this. For those of you who want me to just read your name into the record, when I call your name, if you decided that you don't want to speak, I'll read your name into the record and uh, we can go with that. Okay, Socorro. Buenos dias. Mi nombre es Socorro Moreno. Uh, good morning. My name is Socorro Moreno. Miembro de Kiwa y residente de Koreatown. I am a Kiwa member and resident in Koreatown. Estoy aquí apoyando nuestro parque la I, semana pasada. I am here to support the park. La semana pasada tuvimos un grande logro. Uh, last week we had a, we, we were able to get something very important. El CRA LA apoyó dicho proyecto. CRA LA supported the project. Estamos aquí para pedir apoyo. We are here to ask your support. Y para pedir apoyo a dicho proyecto estamos aquí y más para dar las gracias a todos los que nos han apoyado. We are here to ask support for the project and, and to thank all the people that supported us y que han estado con nosotros estos dos años. And that have been with us for these last two years. Esta adquisición de esta tierra the purchase nos, of this land nos permite un logro positivo en Koreatown. Allow us to get something that is very positive in Koreatown. Ya que por ejemplo hay 455 negocios to reach uh, the goal and we also have like 455 businesses con licencia para vender licor en la misma área. In that same area we have 455 businesses that have a license to sell alcohol. Que tiene en la actualidad solamente un parque. And right now they only have one parking. Que está localizado en la Olympic y la Normandy. Located on Olympic and Normandy. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Walsh, do you still want to speak today? John Walsh, blogging at hollywoodhighlands.org. And also, uh, you can email us at hollywooddems at gmail.com or Facebook us at Mickey Jackson. Uh, this is a CRA project. We urge you, Community Redevelopment Agency, first to go to redevelopment.com. That's an anti-CRA site to find out, redevelopment.com. And we ask you to suspend finan all financial encumbrance votes with, that relate to CRA while there is a bill by Governor Brown in the Assembly awaiting a revote. That bill would abolish the CRA and add $1.7 billion or erase $1.7 billion from the state's debt. This is very, very important. You know, uh, you can bring up all the people you want. You know, I like this counterintuitive, how they play the game here. 
It's Koreatown, so they bring up somebody, the Korean business owners and real estate interests, they bring up somebody who doesn't speak English, only speaks Spanish. Do you understand the games they're playing on your mind? Yeah, I've been in Koreatown, I've taught in Koreatown, I've been in Koreatown in the area before it was Koreatown, and believe me, there are practically no Hispanics in Koreatown because they cannot afford the outrageous rents. Hollywoodhighlands.org for what's happening in this city. Abolish CRA, redevelopment.com. All right, thank you, Mr. Walsh. Um, I have a number of cards here. If people don't need to speak or don't want to speak, just uh, stand up and wave your hand. Um, Wu Wan Choi. Wu Wan Choi. Jang Wu Nan. Um, Pastor Yong Ik Byun. Montserrat Bernardino. All right, again, if you don't want to speak, it's fine. I'll read your name into the record. He needs a Korean translation. Is there one? Need translation? Yes. Korean translation? No? I could translate. All right, we need some assistance translating from Korean to English. Is there anyone present here who speaks Korean? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Wu Won Choi. My English is not enough for you guys, but let me try to do my best. I live in Koreatown only three years so far, and uh, I never have interested in involved in political and all these kind of meetings. But uh, slowly, I must uh, involve uh, my community, uh, community's benefits and uh, our next generation's uh, future. So now I am involved with uh, Kiwa, and I am a uh, Kiwa Mutual Association uh, member too. So, so far I heard uh, you people working for the Korea Towns uh, Park project. And I heard uh, you gentlemen working in uh, favor for Korean peoples. And you guys say Korea Town, but uh, there's uh, more Latinos and uh, other minority also live in Korea Town too. Anyway, I heard uh, uh, park project going very smooth and uh, favor to people in Korea town. So I'm here for say thanks on head on time. And I really appreciate you guys working good for people who need it. Thank you again. All right, uh, Jang Woo Nan and Pastor Young, Young Ik Byun. Thank you, I'm not speaking. All right, thank you. I'll put your card in the record. Pastor Young Ik Byun? No, not speaking. Uh, Montserrat Bernardino? I, I, I'm just going to uh, say my name, so I'm okay. uh, to support. Thank Montserrat Bernardino, read that into the record. Andrew Kim? Do you still need to speak? Mr. Kim? All right, Andrew Kim, Kim I'll read his name into the record. Alexandra Sa? All right, Alexandra, thank you very much. Danny Park, thank you, Mr. Park. Rebecca Ron Ronquillo, no. thank you, Rebecca. Robert Ahn, okay, see you back there. Thank you very much, Robert Ahn. Michael Russell, Michael Russell. I only need a minute. I'm Good sorry? Morning. Yeah. Good morning, Council, uh, City Council. I just need less than a minute. So, uh, on behalf of the Wilshire Center Business Improvement District, I'm also the chair of the LAPD Olympic Community Police Advisory Board. Uh, we're really excited to see this park in our community. Business Improvement District's excited to uh, come up with creative solutions to help the city maintain the park, much like all the other organizations that participated in all the meetings. Uh, as uh, Councilmember LeBonge knows, dear Lord Wilshire, 
use MacArthur Park as a catalyst for economic development. So we see this park as being beneficial to both development, the residential community, and the entire community as a whole. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, let's see. Um, no speakers in the queue on this item. That's the end of the uh, public speaking uh, portion of this hearing. Mr. Okay, you want, okay, Mr. Wesson asks for an aye vote. Mr. Clerk, please open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. And, and just for clarification, that's an adoption of both options one and two. Thank you very much. What's our next item, Mr. Clerk? Madam President, do you wish to adjourn the special meeting and return to the regular? Have we completed all the items in the special meeting? Uh, yes, ma'am, we have. All right, we will now adjourn the special meeting and go back to the regular meeting. Oh, Mr. West, I'm sorry. I'd like to, to request that we su suspend the rules so that we can uh, reconsider item six. There have been some uh, amendments and it, it'll take a second. All right, that's item six, and I believe it's 6A as amended. Uh, there's a motion to suspend the rules on item six by Mr. Wesson. And uh, open the roll on that, please. Yes. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Item six is before us again, and we're going to. M Madam President, to first now we have vote to vote to reconsider. reconsider. That was the suspension of the rules. Now we open the roll on reconsideration on item six. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Now, item six is before us as amended. And pardon me, Madam President, for clarification, there is also a 6B, which is now been circulated as well. Yes. All right, Mr. Clerk, would you please review for the record what item 6A and 6B state? We have uh, item six, which is the Housing Community and Economic Development Committee report relative to the 2011 2012 37th program year community development block grant budget amendment based on reduced entitlement allocations that is uh, agendized. Uh, we further we have a motion 6A, uh, motion Wesson Cardenas, which uh, moves that the uh, Housing Community Economic Development Committee report be amended to fund the community arts program, attachment A number 23, in the amount of $63,000 and reduce funding for human relations advocates, attachment, attachment A number 17, by $18,000 to a total of $282,000. Further, we have uh, motion 6B, uh, uh, which uh, further amends the actions of the committee report to add four additional recommendations. Um, they are circulated and they are rather lengthy. Uh, if you'd like, I could uh, read them for the record, but again, they have been circulated. All right, um, are there any, uh, Mr. Wesson, did you want to speak again? Okay, all right, well, we're going to vote now on item 6A and 6B as amended. So please open the roll, Mr. Clerk. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Next item. Very good. That brings us uh, back to uh, the reconsiderations, uh, reconsideration of items four and five, uh, as well as uh, items 21 and 22, which are scheduled for closed session. Uh, perhaps okay. the chair of the Budget and Finance Committee can uh, speak to uh, items 21 and 22 and advise uh, this body if uh, he were, if, if he recommends that they go in closed or open session. All right, so then let's take up uh, if four and five, if they are ready to go. Oh, we want to go, all right, well then let's wait and go into closed session. Okay. Mr. Parks, did you want to do 21 and 22 in closed session also? Yes. We should, oh. we should have four cases in, in closed session. All right. Okay. So is that, that's the, the remainder of our items. Am I correct? Yes, yes Madam President. All right. Well, then, we'll, uh, Mr. City Attorney, if you would give us the admonition. 
Council will be going into closed session pursuant to Government Code Section 54956.9A for items 4, 5, 21, and 22. And in addition, item 5, uh, the closed session will be regarding uh, Ardon versus City regarding the telephone users tax litigation. Okay. All right. Um, if um, officers would assist us in clearing the chamber. We're about to go into closed session.
is limited. Every drop is precious, but we can all do our share. Use a broom instead of a hose. Wash your car only with a shut-off nozzle. Fix water leaks. Choose drought-tolerant plants and run your sprinklers based on your street address. Odd addresses on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And even addresses on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, before 9 a.m. or after 4 p.m. The future of L.A. is in our hands. And that's a good thing. I'm glad these kids made the right choice.
All right, we're back in open session now. Uh, Mr. Clerk, what is before us? Madam President, that brings us back to uh, items four and five. I believe you can take them together. All right, items four and five. Let's go ahead and open the roll on those items. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. And those items will go forthwith. Madam President, before moving on, there's been a request to uh, send item six forthwith as well. All right, that's without objection. Okay, uh, that brings us to item 21. All right. Uh, there is a recommendation for settlement in the amount of $330,000 in the case entitled Shane Fisher versus City of Los Angeles. All right, uh, there's no speakers in the queue on that item. Let's uh, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Next item. Madam President, would you like to send 22 forthwith? Yes. Without Very objection. Good. Uh, excuse me, uh, 21. Um, that brings us to item 22. There's a recommendation for payment of judgment in the amount of $1,425,537 plus accrued interest up to date of payment in the case entitled Elvin Gilbert versus Daniel Pierce and others. All right, uh, then open the roll on that. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Okay. A again, forthwith on that as well, forthwith, Madam President. Yes. Very good. Um, council has motions for posting and referral. Those motions are posted and referred. There is an excuse on the desk. Council Member Cardenas requests to be excused on July 22nd due to city business. That meets council policy. That's without objection. The desk is clear. All right, members, are there any announcements? Any announcements? Uh, Mr. Rosenthal, did you have an announcement? Okay. If there are no announcements, yes, Mr. Parks. Yes, uh, I'd like to just correct. Uh, we've made an announcement for the last few days on the uh, redistricting meeting. We've just been notified it was changed from June 9th uh, to June the 11th, uh, and June 11th, 2 to 4 p.m. at a new location from the Puente Learning Center to the West Angeles Villas at 30, uh, I'm sorry, 6030 Crenshaw Boulevard. And we'd just like to also uh, ensure that all of our business uh, uh, folks that are interested Thank in you. dealing with and working with uh, uh, the Ward and Power, that they're having their business development expo Thursday, June 9th. Uh, it starts at 4 o'clock at the LADWP headquarters, 111 North Hope Street. All right, any other announcements? If there are no other announcements, I would like to ask um, all members to rise for adjourning motions. Please, please rise, and if the members in the audience would join us and stand too. Thank you, everybody. Happy to be here. It's Janice Hahn's son's birthday, and his name is Mark. Okay. All right, 27. He is a Gemini. Geminis are good. Yeah. It's like having two people for one. That's right. All right. So, any adjourning motions? All right. Uh, Mr. Koretz. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm asking that we adjourn today in the memory of Andrew Gold, a singer, songwriter, musician who passed away this past Friday in his Encino home after battling cancer but then having a, a fatal heart attack. Tragically, he was only 59, but his life had a huge impact on the people who loved him and on the sounds and music that we closely associate with Southern California. His, his biggest hit was Lonely Boy, which in 1976 went to number seven on the U.S. singles chart. The song that probably had the most remarkable impact, given the power of television, is the tune that he penned and wrote and recorded, but when covered by another artist became the memorable theme song to the beloved TV show, The Golden Girls, the song Thank You For Being A Friend. Andrew Gold got his break in music when he joined Linda Ronstadt's band in 1973, and he quickly provided key instrumental and arranging skills that helped vault Ronstadt to the national music for forefront. He had a phenomenal voice and uh, was, was in general a masterly uh, musician, a guitarist, pianist, and drummer who played and recorded with uh, many beloved mu musical icons, including James Taylor, Carly Simon, Jackson Brown, Winona Judd, uh, Celine Dion, Art Garfunkel, Brian Wil Wilson, 
Cher, and John Lennon, Paul McCartney, and Ringo Starr. He was born in 1951 in Burbank, the first of three children. His mother was singer Marnie Nixon, who is best known for having provided the actual singing voices for the starring actresses in such movies as My Fair Lady and West Side Story. Andrew's father was the late Ernest Gold, the Oscar-winning composer who wrote the theme for many movies, including uh, the award-winning Exodus. Andrew attended Oakwood School in North Hollywood, where he first met Linda Ronstadt when she and her band, The Stone Ponies, performed at Oakwood when he was still a high school student. Andrew is survived by his mother, Marty Nixon, his sisters, Melanie Gold Freeman of Tahunga, and Martha Carr of North Hollywood, his wife, Leslie Cogan, and daughters, Emily, Victoria, and Olivia. And he'll be sorely missed both by his family and the many people who loved his music. Thank you, Mr. Koretz. I'd like to second that. Please. Mr. Kerkorian would like to second that. Um, any other? I just want to add, as Mr. Kerkorian second, I think we all should have an Amy. He's a great musician. Local oh, man okay. made good. All right, Mr. Labange, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Uh, and on this side of the horseshoe, Mr. Rosendahl. Uh, thank you, Madam President. And I'm wearing um, the fact that I'm a veteran's hat uh, post 283. Uh, because I ask the Council now to adjourn in the memory of Captain Joseph W. Schultz, a Green Beret who died May 29th in Wardok Province, Afghanistan, of wounds suffered when enemy forces attacked his unit with an improvised explosive device. Joe, 36, was born March 20th, 1975, and grew up in Sacramento, California. In fact, Liz Magala and Phil Tate knew him quite well. Uh, after graduating from the University of Oregon, he worked on a congressional campaign and then for Governor Gray Davis in his Washington, D.C. office. Governor Davis remembered Joe for his bright spirit and enduring commitment to integrity and public service. Joe then transitioned to the U.S. State Department, where he was assigned to the Mideast desk. After the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks, Joe felt the need to serve his country and walked away from his successful career to join the Army. He died doing exactly what he wanted to do, said his longtime friend Jim Debu of Sacramento. Joe received his commission in 2003 and was in the middle of his third tour of Afghanistan when he was killed. Joe received a bronze star and a purple heart during his service. Schultz's other military awards and decorations include the Army Commendation Medal, the Army Achievement Medal, the National Defense Service Medal, the Afghanistan Campaign Medal, the Iraq Campaign Medal, with one campaign star. Global War on Terrorism Expeditary Medal, the Overseas Service Medal, the Army Service Ribbon, the Combat Infantryman Badge, and the Parachutist Badge. He also wore the Special Forces tab and the Ranger tab. Joe's family and friends remember him as loyal, talented, patient, compassionate, witty, driven, and a natural leader. Joe is survived by his wife, Kelly, and his mother, Betsy Reed Schultz, of Port Los Angeles, Washington. As a tribute to Captain Schultz, Governor Brown ordered the flags over the state capitol be flown at half staff. Captain Joseph W. Schultz's service will be held on Saturday, June 11th, in Port Angeles, Washington. May he rest in peace. Thank you very much, Mr. Rosendahl. There are no other adjourning motions. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Okay, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.